Okay, well, why don't we go ahead and get started? Um, well, we have some folks join us here. I'll be letting them in as they, as they join us, but I want to be respectful of your time. Uh, my name is Greg Smith, um, Executive Director of the Florida Literacy Coalition. Welcome. I uh, appreciate your taking time out of your afternoon today to, to join us for this uh, little orientation to give you a little bit of information about a project that we're going to be doing um, in partnership with Crowded Learning, which is a program of world education. And we're really excited about this. Uh, this is modeled in part on something that we did last year and something that uh, Crowded Learning has been doing throughout the country, which are these ed tech, ed tech maker space, space projects. And we did one last year focused on health literacy and our staying healthy curriculum. And um, the results were very impressive. We had lots of great resources come from that effort because this is a, an opportunity to, to learn about technology, educational technology in particular, and how to apply that, but also use that as an opportunity to, um, to develop um, new content, new activities that we can share with you, some of the stuff that we, we did last year focused on, on health literacy. So, um, so at this point, I'd like to turn it over. Actually, I, wanted, I want to do a quick shout out to the Florida Department of Education as well for helping to support this. And with that, I'll, I'd like to turn it over to, um, to Jeff Gomez. And uh, Jeff, if you can uh, introduce your colleagues as well, I'd appreciate that. Thanks. Will do. All right, I'm quickly gonna share my screen here. Sorry, I'm just toggling a bunch of different um, different windows, but welcome. And uh, thank you for taking time today. Um, if you saw the flyer, saw the promotion, this is the info session. So there's, there's no commitment. I feel like I'm selling financial tools right now. Um, there is no commitment uh, for you being here, but we are hoping you will because uh, this, as Greg said, this builds off of some uh, a great uh, activity and event that happened last year in partnership between World Education and Florida Literacy Coalition in developing resources through an ed tech maker space around health literacy. And so this year we are doing um, financial literacy. And so the this maker space, which will introduce you to what that even is, um, is called Let's Build a Financial Literacy Resource Bank. Um, and my name is Jeff Gumas from World Education. Um, I uh, am also the founder of Crowded Learning, uh, which was an initiative started five years ago, almost six years ago now, which seems crazy, um, designed to increase awareness of and access to open education resources, which are freely available resources that uh, teachers are able to use freely, to distribute as they wish, to adapt as they wish, so that there's just more good quality content available for adult educators. And I will let um, Mary Gaston, who's actually going to be the lead facilitator, introduce herself. Hi, so good to see you guys here today. And I hope you'll um, really consider being a part of this. I think we can have a lot of fun. I am a retired adult educator with um, over uh, 20 years in the field. And um, I didn't get the memo evidently about what retired means because once you get into adult education and literacy, it's hard to get out. And uh, just because we love it so much, it, it becomes a part of us. So I'm I'm very fortunate to get to be a part of this project. Look forward to working with you. And then Rachel, I think you're on as well. She might be on the spot here. Oh, hi, everyone. Can you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> That's my fancy microphone again that I always forget to turn on. Um, good, good to see you all. I'm super excited. We love the EdTech Maker Spaces. They're so fun, and we love collaborating with teachers. I'm Rachel Riggs, and I'm a technical advisor for um, World Education, working at our EdTech Center and with our Crowded Learning Initiative and facilitating a lot of ed tech maker spaces and they're different every time. And um, like I said, just a really great experience. So I'm glad you're all here and I look forward to meeting you and chatting more. Awesome. All right, so we are going to try to not take up more than a half hour of your time. Um, and so today's uh, session, what we are going to do really quickly is talk about what an ed tech maker space is. Um, I guess if you could, in uh, using your reactions or just uh, using your physical self, 
uh, do a thumbs up if you've heard of an ed tech makerspace before. And I know there's only three of you. So um, Rachel, myself, and I, oh, cool. Okay, awesome. Um, so two of three of you have, so you're you're wanting to dip your toes in this water um, and that's great. So we'll do a quick overview of what that is. Um, and then we are going to talk about this project in particular, um, what it is, what we're gonna be focused on building together and then um, and then what the logistics uh, will be in terms of your participation. Um, and then we'll just have some time at the end for Q&A. So really quick, um, we just want to introduce you to the concept, understand what the commitment will be because makerspaces are a, um, an extended professional development that typically takes place over about a six week period where we have a mix of synchronous sessions and then asynchronous work in between. Um, but the really fun thing about it is that it, in the end, you have generated and created resources that are for the greater good uh, for all educators and learners to be able to use. So um, I wanna first hear from you and feel free, even those who are facilitating um, and Greg to participate in this as well. But I'm gonna open up a Mentimeter and let me um, grab this uh, link and put it in the chat. And so this is a Mentimeter poll. And now I'm going to go over to Mentimeter. And there's two questions in here. Uh, one is a word cloud. And it is, what financial literacy concepts or terms are most important for learners? Um, you have, I think, three answers that you can give. Um, and please try to keep them to one to two word responses. And then how do you teach financial literacy to students? So just this is open-ended activities that you use, projects um, that you run, any great resources that you know of that you use to help teach financial literacy concepts. Um, so I will give a second for that. And did the link work? I should make sure, there we go. Cool. So uh, this is a word cloud activity. So you can see some words getting larger. If maybe you were creatively stunted when I first posed the question, um, you can see some terms that maybe you're like, oh yeah, that's a term that's really important. It looks like credit um, is, and budgets, budgeting and budget uh, all obviously do with the same thing, savings and savings and debt. So. We're seeing some clear winners <laughs> um, in terms of what is important. And fortunately, all of these are topics um, that we will be covering within this project. So that's good to know. And then it looks like we have, oh, I, I never know how this, oh, I hit enter. Here we go. Um, FPP uses Spondelix TV financial edutainment program. <laughs> what is that? Uh, whoever <laughs> whoever responded with that, I'd love to learn what that is. It's a mouthful. I know that. Uh, you can unmute yourself. You should be able to unmute yourself. Hi, my Hello. name is Amanda <laughs> Policelli. Um, so I am the executive producer for Spondulix. So I'm part of FPP Coalition, a nonprofit based in Central Florida. Um, we elevate financial capability for all. So Spondulix is like Netflix and Hulu, but cooler because it's about financial education. So we basically have multiple financial edutainers or financial education content creators. So think like FinTalk, Instagram, fin section, like finance section, so on and so forth. Um, and we work with them and put their content on our streaming platform, but also on the back end of Spondulix, which is really my job, is that we do pre-production and create our own original Spondulix TV shows or specials that focus on specific overlooked communities and financial education with them. And suddenly this EdTech makerspace is totally... <laughs> <laughs> um that's really interesting i will be in touch to see definitely if we can make sure we're incorporating your resources For sure in this and you'll see what that means as we walk okay. through but that's Perfect. really great greg were you aware of this <laughs> you're muted sorry you're muted greg I am uh, aware of this Florida Prosperity Partnership, and they're going to be presenting at our conference next week. Yes, so yes, wonderful. we are. Bill and I will yeah. be there. Yeah. Oh, cool. All right. 
Um, so we see hands-on banking. That's great. Uh, a local credit union uh, has the prog uh, program. If you have a link to that, we'd love to um, see it because these could be resources that we end up um, drawing from to build our uh, resource bank. And someone has used Money Smart in the past. I'm going to add that to the list as well. Um, just so that I check those out and see if those uh, should be included in this project. Um, so great. Um, so that was just to get a sense of the resources that you use and the topics that you're teaching, which are really the two core elements of how we're going to be building this resource bank, um, taking key topics in financial literacy that we know are important to learners and drawing uh, activities from high use, high quality resources and aligning them to those topics so that it's just easier for folks who want to develop financial literacy skills with their students to actually find specific topical resources that work for them and for their context. And so we're going to do that through a process called the EdTech Makerspace. Um, and we call the EdTech Makerspace professional development with purpose. And basically what that means is this is professional development and the fact that you are going to be learning. You'll be learning about how others are teaching financial literacy. You'll be learning about resources that can be used to teach financial literacy. You'll also be learning some ed tech tools that can be used to design activities that can support financial literacy uh, skill development. And what you're going to do is take that learning and then apply those skills by generating reusable resources for all. So that might be creating activities using those ed tech tools, curating activities from existing resources and pulling them together topically. Um, but again, all of the work that you'll be doing based on the learning that occurs results in a shared, um, the shared development of a set of resources that can be used by everybody. Um, and so the EdTech Makerspace itself was originally started three years ago now. Um, actually, yeah, three years ago, right around now, maybe a couple of months. And it was in the summer of 2020 when we were in the midst of the pandemic, as you were all well aware, and you're also all well aware that it became very difficult to connect with our students. And we had to shift fully online. And we recognized that there was lots of great content and you may have have had books or other things lying in classrooms that were not being used anymore because your students didn't have access to them. But we saw this flood of all the online content and online resources that could be used. Um, and in some cases that was great because things were ready to go and could be used by learners who might only have access via mobile devices. But we also saw some great resources that um, while free and online, um, maybe did not lend themselves well to students whose only online access might be through a mobile device. Um, an example of that was this reading level library called Reading Skills for Today's Adults. And all of the stories from that library, of which there are 345 stories, um, are freely available. They can be viewed on a mobile device. But each of the stories had this great supplement. Um, and the supplement was only available as a downloadable Word document. But in the supplement, there were vocabulary words and definitions, vocabulary activities, language building activities, speaking activities, and then a multiple choice assessment, as well as writing assessment. And so all these great activities that could be run with students um, weren't being used necessarily because of the fact that most students might not have the ability to download a Word document onto a computer. And then once they have that, these really aren't designed for students to be typing in them. They're mainly designed for a teacher to print them out and for students to work in hard copies. And so we thought about how can we make these resources more accessible? And so we cherry picked specific activities that lend themselves well to ed tech tools that we knew are high use within adult education. So one of those tools is Quizlet. And so we took the vocabulary words and definitions. We trained teachers how to use Quizlet and create Quizlet study sets. And then they took the vocabulary from stories they selected and created Quizlets. So now each of the stories has a Quizlet that has interactive vocabulary. So students now have the ability to engage with that vocabulary in multiple ways beyond just the words and definitions that you see here. 
And we also thought about the fact that comprehension and allowing students to read and check their understanding independently is really important. Um, it's not that a teacher is going to assign all 345 of these stories, but there should be a way for students to be able to read them independently and then see if they comprehended it. And so um, we took the assessment that was already created in this resource and taught teachers how to use Google Forms to create multiple choice quizzes. And so again, teachers took the same stories that for which they had created those quizlets, and now they took the comprehension questions from those stories, took this new skills they had in creating Google Forms and created a Google Form of that quiz so that students have the ability to now launch that quiz, take the assessment and see it independently, regardless of whether or not a teacher has assigned it. And this really kind of caught on. So to pull all of these resources together, now we have these Quizlets, we had these Google Forms um, as separate files, and then we had the stories as a separate link. Um, we taught teachers how to use a tool called Wakelet, which allows you to create collections. And so within each Wakelet, there's the vocabulary study set, there's the original story, and then there's the comprehension quiz, all together in one collection that the teacher can share and the teacher can adapt. So if the teacher wants to add um, additional activities, so this is one story called Should Ben Be at Work about a worker who is sick and needs should call in, but he needs the money, um, a teacher could make a copy of this wakelet and add additional activities that they want students to work on in relation to calling in sick. Um, and so through this effort by about 40 teachers, 45 teachers, um, we took the 345 story wakelets and in mass created over 1000 reusable adaptable resources um, that are also available as an app. And I will uh, click on this just to show you all of these resources are available in multiple forms in this Wakelet, which I will share with you um, in the chat. And the key to this is that every single one of these things, the Quizlets can be copied by teachers into their own Quizlet account. And so they can make copies and adapt them. The Google Forms are actually available with copy links. So they can make copies of the Google Form and use that and assign that to their students so that they're seeing students progress on those uh, quizzes. Um, it's everything is done with reusability in mind. And so the goal of most of our EdTech makerspaces, including this one, is to ensure that all of the activities we generate are freely available, ideally are licensed for reuse and are easily adaptable. Um, and so through three years of running EdTech makerspaces, we've, we've seen that there's three real formats. Um, that reading skills for today's adults makerspace that we ran uh, was adapting content. And so we saw that this great reading resource exists, but their activities could be made more um, available to students if we digitize them in a way using ed tech tools that we know that teachers want to learn how to use. But we've also run makerspaces where we know there's great content out there. Um, and we want teachers to just look at these great resources, think about the topics they teach, and then curate activities from various resources so that it's just easier for others to be able to find, say, great activities or great um, primers on, say, dealing with debt or savings or creating a budget. Um, but then we also know that teachers are incredibly creative beings and they want, they're already using some of these tools and they're already creating activities um, for their students. And so in our makerspaces, we tend to provide opportunities for students or teachers to create original activities within the topics that we're focused on. And so through this process, we've run a number of EdTech makerspaces that have generated um, all of this great content in digital literacy. Um, we've done a curation activity where um, teachers organized resources into these various digital skills domains. And the result is a library of nearly 2000 resources from, from sites that you're, you know, um, like GCF Learn Free or digitallearn.org, um, which is the Public Library Association or Google. So basically 
teachers became experts in these particular domains. They looked at the activities within things like GCF Learn Free, and they aligned the activities within those resources to the skills within this digital skills framework. Um, that's actually very uh, near to what we'll be doing as part of this project, taking resources that we know exist and aligning them to financial literacy concepts. Last year, as we mentioned, and we'll look at in a second, we had teachers um, using the Staying Healthy Florida Literacy uh, Coalition Health Literacy Curriculum for ESOL and had them design activities as well as curate existing resources to the topics that each of the lessons within this curriculum are aligned. Um, and then of course, the Marshall Level Reading Program. Um, we recently did an ed tech maker space where teachers created a digital skills glossary. And that is also something that we'll be um, building into this where you are going to be developing vocabulary activities to support financial literacy concepts in your topic areas. Um, and then finally, this was not uh, a maker space, but we, um, Greg and his team actually, a couple of years ago, or long ago actually, realized the, the value of taking something that maybe wasn't necessarily designed for the GED, such as Khan Academy, which doesn't organize itself around the GED test, but they realized that if they curate the resources to the GED concepts, that makes Khan Academy so much more useful for our GED candidate students, because then the video-based study curriculum for the GED because the, the lessons that are already available are aligned to those concepts. Um, and so last year, just real quickly, we did this health literacy um, ed tech maker space. We only had about 11 teachers that, that actually fully finished the project, but those 11 teachers generated over 200 activities. And so we started with the two curricula that are part of the Staying Healthy um, series. And each one of those chapters has uh, a consistent format, which is a nice place to start if you're going to have teachers creating or generating um, reusable ed tech activities. So we saw there was a great opening image for all of the chapters. We saw there was a vocabulary list within all of the chapters. And then we saw each of the chapters also had this dialogue um, around health, the health literacy concept being covered in the chapter. And so that EdTech Maker space, we taught teachers how to use Jamboard. And they took those images as well as others and created a See, Think, Wonder activity for the chapter for students to engage um, prior to the lesson or and thinking about um, looking at images, what do you see, what do you think, what do you wonder with images that relate to the chapter content. Uh, we also took the vocabulary and built a Jamboard builder, which has a series of activities within it that all have learners working with the chapter vocabulary. And then teachers also took that dialogue at the end and used Jamboard to create a dialogue on Scramble, which has students dragging different parts of a conversation into the logical sequential order to practice language skills. Um, we also reused Quizlet to create those interactive study sets that many of you may be familiar with. And then we taught teachers how to use Wakelet and they used Wakelet to pull all of this content again together. And so now as a result of that project, we have all of these Wakelets uh, that are organized by chapter. And if you go to any chapter, you can see that here's the chapter. Um, so someone can find that, that particular chapter, which is on medicines. And then there's that see, think, wonder, there's the vocabulary builder, there's the Quizlet, and there's the dialogue on Scramble Jamboard, all in one place. And every single one of these chapters has this same set of core activities. So it's just added an additional resource to an already great curriculum and set of activities that teachers can run. We also had teachers curate leveled readings um, and vocabulary activities, as well as develop original activities. And so this is where that creativity that we know teachers have really came into play. So for this chapter, teachers made a Jamboard that had uh, students taking pictures, the symptoms and what it means and organizing them into this table. We had teachers use word wall to take parts of the body. The focus of um, this chapter is being able to communicate symptoms and pain. Um, and so these were two great original activity creations that uh, teachers did taking the existing knowledge they had in using these great ed tech tools. 
We saw people create labeling activities using Jamboard, learning checks using Google Forms, um, more uh, Google Forms and WordWall, and then categorizing activities using Jamboard and um, different, different applications of using WordWall. So what we saw was curating activities to those topics uh, in each of the lessons, but then we also saw teachers um, unleashing their creativity and we had a standardized set of activities that everyone created. And the output becomes these, these sequential organized sets of resources where we know there's a set of things that you can do in a routine basis with any of the chapters within that curriculum. So now real quickly, um, there's not a lot to talk about because I, I've covered a lot of the things that you will be doing, albeit with financial literacy um, content. So now let's just really quickly get into the financial literacy resource bank um, project overview. So our goal is to, oh, I forgot to animate one of these, <laughs> um, but to build a financial literacy resource bank that includes activities from high quality resources organized by the topics that you see here. So what you'll be doing is working in a topic level team to um, build a set of resources that are, are, are around that particular topic. Um, these topics have been pre-selected based on a survey that went out and conversations that we've had with programs that we know are teaching financial literacy within their programs. In terms of the resources that you'll be curating, um, we are going to be pulling reading and language content for each of those topics so that from these two reading leveled reading programs, uh, any financial literacy readings that we have, we want those to be topically organized, as well as learning chocolate, which is a tool you might be familiar with that teaches uh, English language learning and uh, English vocabulary. Um, they have a number of uh, study sets focused on money. Um, those will all be curated into a wakelet like you just saw with health literacy, albeit financial literacy. But then we know there's some great resources, and I learned about a couple more when we did that Mentimeter, which may be added, um, but three that are provided by banking institutions that have really great content. A lot of uh, it is available in video. In many cases, it's also available in English and Spanish, which is excellent. But hands-on banking, which was mentioned in the Mentimeter, Better Money Habits, which is from Bank of America, and Practical Money Skills, which is from Visa. Um, there are a handful of others that we may pull in, but these are the three main ones that we'll be focusing on. And then USA Hello um, has limited resources, but um, I really like it because it actually, all of the articles are available in I think up to seven languages, and it's really easy to toggle to those. Um, so this was a new resource I actually learned about a couple of months ago at CoAbe um, that we'll be pulling in as well. So I was going to do a curation dash, but I, I don't want to take up time. I might actually just send this out as a pre-activity um, for those of you who choose to join this project. But essentially how you're going to participate in this makerspace is, as I said, you'll be working in topic level teams to build vocabulary lists and curate resources in those seven topics that I listed earlier. And then we're gonna do a training um, in Google Jamboard and a training in Google Slides for you to create um, activities that relate to the vocabulary that has been pulled together for your topic. So there's a Jamboard activity template that we'll be using to create Jamboard activities for each of the topics. And then there's a Google Slides template that we'll be using to create a set of vocabulary slides for that topic. So instructional slides for teaching, as well as a Jamboard slide for a Jamboard activity for students to be able to engage with vocabulary and demonstrate their understanding of vocabulary. And then we'll be pulling it all together as teams uh, into topical wakelets. So like those chapter level ones that I just showed for staying healthy, those will be topic level based on the seven topics that um, I shared a moment ago. And this is the schedule for the project. So all of our sessions are on Thursdays. They are 90 minutes a piece. Um, we are in the info session right now. Um, they run at this time from noon to 1.30 p.m. on Thursdays. Um, the first session will be on curating resources within your topic area. Um, 
and uh, developing vocabulary lists, which will already be predetermined, but you'll be kind of nuancing those. Um, the second session will be learning how to create those activities in slides and Jamboard. And then the third session will be uh, learning about Wakelet and basically organizing those resources into Wakelets as a team. And then a month later, so you'll have a month to actually pull everything together, we will have our project showcase where we will reveal our new financial literacy resource bank. Um, so that's it. This is, again, a short little half hour. Um, I do want to take time for questions for those of you who can stay. Um, but be on the lookout. This will go to all registrants, a recording of this session, as well as the sign up form and a little bit more information, including probably that Padlet uh, that I wanted to do of the, the curation dash, um, just to get your gears going on how we curate resources within these topic areas. And my hope is that you are interested uh, in participating in this because it truly is an amazing collaborative experience. I always learn so much from the teachers that participate and we always learn um, new activity ideas from teachers. It's just a great opportunity for sharing and learning from one another. Um, so I'm gonna stop there and take time for any questions folks may have. Any questions? Not so much a question, just a comment. I'm glad we're doing this. <laughs> this is, it's coming at a good time. Um, Leon County has somehow or another received a grant from, now I don't even remember from who, but it it's all financial literacy. And it's the whole, not just the library, not just our program. And um, so that's starting in 2024. We're really going to be ramping up some of the financial literacy instruction that we do in our adult literacy program, the ESL program, but also just the the public in general. So things like this will be very helpful. <laughs> great. great. Yeah. Um, feel free to recruit colleagues that might be interested in participating. I will do so. <laughs> yeah, doesn't look like there's any other questions, but thank you. Very comprehensive. Really appreciate it. We're very much looking forward to this partnership, we're going to be promoting it at our conference next week as well. And um, I, I appreciate all of you who've taken time out of your afternoon to join us. And we really do hope that you'll participate in this. We got a lot of great feedback from the folks who uh, did so last time. It was a great learning experience and also an opportunity to to give back to something in, in, in a bigger way. And all these all these resources. Uh, it bears repeating are free, uh, not only the ones that we developed last year through our health literacy, but all the EdTech makerspace resources that are developed throughout um, throughout the year and the years. How many have you done now, Jeff, of these? Uh, Brr, I don't know. A lot, right? <laughs> uh, Mary, Mary and Rachel have been instrumental in, in most of them, but um, yeah, we've done at least, well, we the ones I showed, we have a series going on right now that's all focused on teaching skills that matter. Um, so we just finished our fourth of that series. Um, and that's kind of a both output, but also research um, around this process so that we can make sure that we're maximizing the impact. Um, yeah, absolutely. Learn, learning with the purpose, is that what you? Yep. Kind of the yeah, absolutely. So uh, thank you very much. And um, in terms of uh, those of, who are interested in participating, uh, Jeff, I guess we, we're going to have a form right for an official sign up. We had, <laughs> we need to. Uh, we'll get that out to everybody, and um, everybody has the the timetable now, so we'll get that out to you forthwith. So, thanks again. Yeah, there'll be a form with uh, this recording um, that'll go out tomorrow, and also I'll ask some of the same questions. If now that you've seen this, you're like, "Ooh, this might be a great resource to include," um, we would would love those as well. And I think um, Amanda, I will be following up with you um, to learn a little bit more about um, Spondulix. Yes, is that right? Okay, great. Well, great. thanks again, everyone. You all have a good afternoon. Take care. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye.